Welcome back to the campus of the Rochester Institute of Technology, where today we'll be using the Bruker D8 Advance XRD system and navigating through the operation and analysis softwares. You will start by opening the XRD diffraction software. We actually don't have a password, so you can just click OK when you approach the screen. From here, you're going to want to make sure you are connected to the instrument, and you can just press connect. After you have gotten connected, you can go up to commander. It's important to make sure that your shutter is closed. And we are going to charge the x-ray by sending the voltage to 40 and the current to 40 as well. And then press set when you've gotten that complete. From here, we are going to set the stage so everything is zero. You can click the checkbox and see how this is not zero. We are going to go up to the button right of the checkbox and that should set all of our positions to zero. From here, we can load our sample and then go to Start Jobs. You're going to want to name your sample. Today, we are going to be examining sugar. For the experiment name, you're going to want to go to the XRD, RIT XRD methods, and you can select any of the powder samples because that's what we'll be working with today. For this purpose, we will be using the 12 minute, five to 60 degree run. And this is where you're going to be saving your results. Um, just make a folder for your lab. I'm saving it to Tom's folder now and just name the file. So after you've done this, you are going to make sure in the top left corner that this run is validated, and then you can start the run. Now you can go up to Commander after this, and you can see it happening in real time. You'll watch the shutter open as well as the stage begin to move. For the purpose of this video, we are just going to let the results run, and we will talk to you after. So now we have our results and you'll notice that the shutter is now closed. We are going to want to relax the X right now, and so we are going to go back up to the voltage and current and change it to 20 and 5 respectively before we click Set. Now we are going to go to the evaluation software After it has completely loaded up, you are going to want to go up to the File tab and Import from Files. So it opened directly to, well, we're opening it into Tom's folder so I can get the sample. You're going to make sure you pick the raw data file because that's the one that we can work with in this software. So here's our spectrum. We are going to first adjust the background. So the background for this sample actually looks pretty good. So I'm going to be going with the default, but you can see how it slightly adjusts the background. From here, we are going to identify our major peaks. And you'll notice that there are several peaks that show up in this spectrum. However, we are going to account for the ones that are most likely noise and interference by changing our threshold. I'm going up to 10 for this, and you'll notice that it changes the number of peaks detected to about half of that before. 
from here we can append this. And when we do this, it will actually display what theta value each peak is located in. Now we are going to determine the crystallinity of the sample. You will scroll down to the crystallinity section and simply compute crystallinity. This sample um, is pretty crystalline at about 95%, which is around what we expected. Now we are actually going to be going into a literature database in order to see what other samples similar to this look like. This can be especially helpful in order to confirm the identity of your sample, or if you already know what it is, compare it to other samples of the same thing. Thank you for watching. If you have any further questions or are ready to schedule your in-person training, please contact Tom Alston at the given email.